Hey guys, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, it's theclinicaltrials.guru. I've been asked by several people actually to give my thoughts and my two cents on competing research clinics and specifically what happens when someone leaves one particular research company and goes to form another research company, a competing research clinic in the same area. And this is something that goes on in every industry. This, it doesn't just apply to clinical research, but I think the reason why it happens, or at least it seems to happen more often in our industry, is because people don't really understand what clinical research is. They might apply for a clinical research job out of curiosity. So they might end up working at a research clinic as either a study coordinator or a sub investigator or a principal investigator, they may start getting the hang of it. They may start to smell the money. Uh, and then they say, okay, this is not that difficult. I've been here for a year or I've been here for two years and I see what these guys are doing. I can do the same thing myself. And it happens a lot. They go, they start their own clinic for whatever reason. Sometimes they leave on good terms. Sometimes they leave on bad terms. Sometimes they have nasty breakups. Uh, I've seen them all. So, this happened to a client of mine actually. For those of you who don't know, I also have a service where I broker studies. And I know I hate study brokers too, but I've been asked by so many sites, despite my warnings, to recommend them to study brokers. So I said, no, I will recommend you to my services, but I recommend you don't rely on me for that. <clears throat> so, one of my clients that uh, I am brokering studies for, for the time being, used to be at one clinic. Then they messaged me that they're starting their own clinic and they felt guilty about meeting with a pharmaceutical liaison. So if you read my book, How to Get More Studies, you will see that I talk about one good way to get studies is to ask your sales reps that visit your office, if you have a private practice, for the pharmaceutical liaison. So this person was guilty to talk to the pharmaceutical liaison because he used to talk to this person at his other clinic and now he felt bad about bringing business away from that clinic to his own. Guess what? This is a business like any other. You should not feel guilty about it. So there's two sides to this uh, situation. There's the site directors, the current site owners, and the management of the first clinic and then there's the employees or the PIs or some of the principal some of the sub investigators who end up leaving and forming their own clinic now from the perspective of the site directors let's take me as an example I don't care as an employer I don't care if I'm hiring you as a study coordinator or as a PI or as a sub I and you only want to learn the way I do business for six months or one year and then you're gonna go start your own I don't care the only thing I ask is that you tell me what it is you want to do so I can actually help you accomplish that goal believe it or not I've gone to help people who are trying to compete with me uh, because I still think there's value in forming an alliance with someone even a competitor even a competitor within close proximity to your site there's still a lot of value there there's a lot of collaboration, and even though you're not part of the same organization any longer, there still should be some camaraderie, some professionalism, and if you play it just right, there could be tremendous synergies available between your two sites. So for those people who think that uh, there's not enough to go around, uh, first of all, you're wrong. Um, so, and guess what, even if you think that way, the people are still going to end up leaving your clinic to start their own if that was their intention to begin with. So my my point of view on this is at least I at least want to know what you want to do. Okay, I don't care if you're money hungry. I don't care if you're hungry for a title. I don't care if you want to just work for me for six months and then you want to go start your own com competing clinic. Just as an employer, this is what I tell all my employees. Let me know what it is you want to do so I can help you perhaps accomplish those goals. Now on the flip side of that coin, if you are someone working for a clinic and you have thoughts of leaving and starting your own, uh, believe it or not, I actually recommend that you do that, but I recommend that you're upfront and transparent 
with your employer about it, at least when you're pretty sure that that's the direction you want to go. I've had this happen again from several employees. I've had one case where an employee was not upfront with me about it and I actually found out. I ended up finding out from a sponsor because guess what? It's a small world, guys. People are going to find out. I ended up finding out from a sponsor and I ended up laying her off, firing her actually, uh, because I was paying her to work for me and she was only giving me half of her effort. The other half was spent building up her own clinic. Now, I would not have fired her. I probably would have helped her if she was up front with me about it. I would have probably helped her as crazy as that sounds. I would have helped her create her own company and she could have probably accomplished it faster and we would have left on good terms and we would probably still have a working relationship to this day because again I believe there's a lot of synergies possible between two even competing clinics even two competing clinics within close proximity to each other so back to the original question I would not feel guilty about uh, you reaching out to that pharmaceutical liaison and telling them that you now have your own clinic. I would not feel guilty about that. This is a business. They understand that. I hope you left on good terms. I don't know the specifics of the story, um, but that's my thoughts on clinics and how they split up and how different people go on and form competing companies. That's my thoughts on it. It's probably surprising that, uh, or maybe not surprising, that I would actually help a competitor of mine because when you work for me, I my entire goal is to figure out what it is you want. And I hope that we can have enough context and enough trust that you can trust me to be honest with your uh, goals and telling me your actual goals. Even if it is competing with my own company, I'll probably help you do that. So as a site director, as a site owner, that's my strategy to you. It may be counterintuitive, but I really do think that the more you give to people, even to your own competitors, the more you ultimately will get back. And as someone who's working at a clinic, who's thinking about starting their own company, make sure you know what you're doing before you leave. And then make sure when, as soon as you figure out that this is the direction you want to go, that you tell your current employer and maybe they, they'll help you out. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll fire you. That's the risk you've got to take. And again, you've got to know the context between you and your employer. But that's my two cents on this topic. Send your questions at me, dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com, and we will